I'll read a portion of scripture for our reflection this morning. Psalm 111. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. All he does is good, is just and good. All his covenants are trustworthy. They are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for his people. He has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name he has. Hallelujah. Please let us pray together. Eternal and almighty Father, we give you praise and thanks for a beautiful weather and a day you have given to us. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, God, for every blessing that you have showered upon us, even for the difficulties, O oh God, that you bring our way to groom us, to make us more like Christ. We thank you. We have gathered at your feet to worship you. Holy Spirit of a living God, Holy Father, Son of God, this is your space. We are here to glorify you. Please take absolute control of this time and space. And Father, we pray that our minds will remain here, that our hearts will be in tune with you. That Lord, every burden that walked in here at online will be placed at your feet and that you will be magnified above everything. Take control of every aspect of the service and take all the glory Thank you that you do more than we have asked. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, let's stand together and sing our opening hymn, God Reveals His Presence.
Thank you for good singing. So please, shall, shall we sit and pray? We want to pray, we want to adore the Lord. The Lord deserves our adoration. Let us come before the, the Lord with words of adoration. Exalt the name of the Lord. Let's tell him of his greatness, his strength, his might, his glory, and more. He's a God of love. He loves us. And he loves, his love is without measure. He's always faithful. His ways are excellent. And his paths are peace. Who is like unto our God? There is nobody like God. Please adore the Lord this morning. want to continue in prayer. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Is there anything that you have done or you should have done or I should have done, we should have done that we have not done and we want to ask God for forgiveness? So please come before the Lord. This is a good opportunity wants to come clean before the Lord and the blood of Jesus purifies. There is nothing that the blood of Jesus will not purify. It is so powerful. So please confess any unconfessed sins to God and ask for forgiveness and be sure that he will do that. May confess the sins of the church, the sins of our families, the sins of the nation, this nation, the nations. Let's bring repentance before the Lord. He is faithful. Asidanka o nyame, nyame a oni ye wo, ni ni ma e ye o ye. opportunity to thank the Lord for all he's done for us. Countless blessings. Please thank the Lord. What has he done for you? Please look back and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his mercies. Thank the Lord for his provision, his protection. Why are you alive? Why am I alive? Thank him even for the challenges. As Christians, we know that that is also to train us, to make us better people. We may not understand everything at the side of life, but let's learn to thank God because the Bible says, in everything, give thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us.
So we have, um, for intercessory prayers, we have, have just three points for us to pray on. We'll pray for the unreached people groups. We heard a lot um, two Sundays ago. We want to continue to intercede for the unreached people groups, and we shouldn't only do it in church. We should do it at home. We should continue to pray. And then we should we we'll also pray for empowerment by the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to go out. We are supposed to do more than we are doing. If we are doing, we can do more. We will pray on that as well, our own contribution to the Great Commission. And then we also want to pray for safety at this time of the year, um, safety on our roads, safety with everything. So these are just the three points I would like us to pray on. Um, so we'll turn to prayer. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord tells us. Here are so many people, as we heard, who still have not heard the gospel. And we want to pray that God send forth laborers. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said, we should pray that the Father will send laborers. We also are laborers. God send me and send more laborers. I can't do it alone. Send forth laborers. So let us just pray for missionaries, for people that the Lord uses. And let's pray for opportunities to, to support them to, in prayer and in cash and kind so that the work will continue and not be stalled at any point. Please let us pray. You and I have been empowered to reach out. The Holy Spirit is given to us. He said, tarry, wait for the Holy Spirit, and you will be my witnesses. So we know why the Holy Spirit is given to us to be witnesses. We receive the Holy Spirit when we accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, a seal upon our lives. What have we done? What are we doing? Are we being fruitful? Last week we heard about fruitfulness. Am I being fruitful? Are you being fruitful? And so on. So we want to come before the Lord and say, God... Fill me anew with your Holy Spirit and give me a burden for the things that you are giving me the Spirit to do. If a tree is not bearing fruit, if you plant a tree that is not bearing fruit, what will you do to it? You will prune it, keep pruning it. After a while, what do you do to it? So God have mercy on me and help me to be fruitful. So shall we pray about our own fruitfulness, our own part in the Great Commission? If you are doing it, you can do better. So let's ask for grace to do better. Finally, we want to pray for safety on our roads, safety for travelers. Last part of the year, usually we have a lot of accidents and, and so many things happening. We want to pray that Holy Spirit, the Lord, will take absolute control and protect us, our families, our loved ones, our nation, the nations. Let's just pray for safety and for God's protection for all in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Please pray. Please let us pray together. Eternal Father, we are grateful to you, O God, for the opportunity you give to us daily to come to you and to, to pray and to lay our burdens before you. Father, we have come 
and we have laid these burdens to you. We are praying, oh God, you taught us, oh God, even to pray for the unreached people groups. We thank you that you have heard our prayer and that, Lord, you will send more laborers and you will help us also to contribute to this great work that has rich rewards. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would help us, fill us with your spirit. Give us a passion for the work you've given to us. Help us, oh God, to think about it morning, afternoon, and evening. Wake up, oh God, Heavenly Father, seeking opportunities to make you known wherever we go. Because the days are evil. We pray in the name of Jesus that you protect us and our loved ones, our families. Cover us with your blood. The church, our nation, the nations, oh God, preserve us, oh God, especially during this season, oh God. We usually have a lot of accidents, oh Lord. We thank you that you will do more than we have asked. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, thanking you that you have heard and answered. Amen. Worship team, can you lead us in a time of adoration, please? Praise the Lord and good morning. Hallelujah. It is a good morning because we have met in the name of the Lord and he's here. Shall we please rise? to invite you to close your eyes with us if you can and let us focus our minds on the Lord as we adore him
salvation. We give you the praise of our salvation. We see you, Jesus, in every day's deliverance. You have delivered us from all the things that Satan planned for us. And so we sing to you. We sing your praise and your glory. And we say it is all yours, Spirit of the living God. It is all yours. Thank you for your presence in our lives and for your deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 this morning what a mighty savior we have this morning we want to pray with anybody here who has a challenge a difficulty you feel oppressed under the attack of the enemy or struggling in one area or the other we want to cast ourselves at the feet of the Lord and lay our burdens there. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. If you are here this morning with a burden, please rise up on your feet as we go before the Lord, who is our helper. The Lord, our helper. Wabo ayen washe yesu yena bakasi ni wa the Lord your helper the Lord our helper we look to the hills but our help does not come from the hills our help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth begin to talk to him this helper is also our father I want to say father I need your help talk to him talk to him our help comes from him speak to the Lord about the situation his help has no limits 
His power cannot be restrained. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even imagine. Talk to him. Talk to him as a child to a father. We need your help, Lord. We need your help this morning. We need your help. Thank you that you are a helper. Begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank him. The Bible says this is the confidence we have in approaching God that when we pray according to his will, he hears us and because he hears us, he will answer us. Thank him that it is done. It is settled. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, thank you so much that you are our helper. Thank you that there is no need we have in our lives that you cannot help. So this morning we run to your throne of grace. Where you have promised that when we come, we we'll receive mercy to find grace to help us in our times of need. This morning, Lord, we lift up the emotional needs before you. We pray for that marriage that Satan is trying to destroy. Father, let your help be sent to that marriage in the name of Jesus. We pray for that mother. We pray for that father who needs help regarding how to direct the child, this particular child. Father, we pray that your help will be experienced in the name of Jesus. Give us help in our health. Give us help in our finances. Give us help in our warfare. Father, in every single area, please give us help because we know no other help but you. And thank you that, Lord, you are faithful. And because we have called on you, we will see your glory. And Lord, will give you all the honor and all the praise. Thank you that forever your word concerning every one of us is settled in the heavens. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and with thanksgiving. Amen. Please take your seats. We want to also pray for those celebrating their birthdays in the month of November. If you are here and you are a November birthday celebrant or even if you are celebrating your wedding anniversary in November, please rise up on your feet. Let's appreciate them. We thank God for your, your lives. We are praying for you with the hope that you will send a birthday link. We thank God for your lives and we want to pray and commit you to the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that life is a gift from you. We sleep and awake because you sustain us. You alone make us dwell in safety when we lay down. And so we want to thank you for the lives you have added or are going to add to the lives of our brothers and our sisters. We are grateful to you. Father, we entrust them into your care and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your grace will abound towards them even in this year. We pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, you will draw them closer and closer to yourself. Father, we pray, take hold of the ends of their year and shake evil out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, we pray that, Lord, you draw them closer and closer to yourself. By the time this year comes to an end, we pray that they can look back and say of truth, I've gotten to know the Lord better. Thank you that you do much more than we can ask or even imagine. We commit those celebrating their wedding anniversaries into your care. Father, let your grace abound towards them. Pour fresh love into their hearts and into their marriages. Thank you that you do all this for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Happy birthday. God bless you. So we'll have a memory verse uh, recital, and this will be projected for us. So we'll have a video um, recital. So projection team, can you please help us? Verse 20, verse 9. 
You can say I have kept a pure heart. I am clean and without sin. Proverbs 20 verse 9. Proverbs 10 verse 5. He who gathers his crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during the harvest is a disgraceful son. Psalm 33 verse 4. The word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Acts 4 12. The salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name by which we must be saved. Verse 20. John 14 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 13 34. Now I give you a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you, but will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Matthew 4 4. And Jesus said, No, but the scriptures also say, Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that passes through the mouth of God. Hebrews 4.12 For the Spirit of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. It exposes our innermost desires, cutting between bone and marrow, soul and spirit. Galatians 2.20 For my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Thank you very much, Projection Team. God bless you. Um, I'd like to welcome, a special welcome to all who are visiting us physically and online, um, warmly welcome you to LIC. If this is your first time, and um, for those who are physically here, may I kindly ask that you rise so that we can acknowledge you. Please, can you just rise? If you are here for the first time, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be happy to have a brief meeting with you after the service. So if you could come forward, not now, but at the end of the service, after the service, and we'll have a short interaction before you leave. Thank you. Please, you can take your seats. So we'll take our offering now. This will be the mode of um, the offering. The baskets will come around for those of us in here and outside. And for those online, you, you will see um, some information scrolled on the screen, numbers um, and so on, um, account numbers and all that, um, you can use any of those to donate your money, your tithe, thanksgiving, whatever, you can use them. Thank you. Praise team, can you lead us please? Praise the Lord, please shall we rise.
because you first loved us. We did not choose you, but you chose us. And then you drew us with your loving kindness. And then you have sustained us with your very life. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. So we give our lives back to you. That you may use it for what you want. Use us for what you want. And at this time, Father, we bring our offering before you and ask that you bless it. You are the one that gives us the power to create wealth. And so even as we bring back to you, may you take this wealth and use it for what you want. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And also say, Amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. Thank you, praise team. God bless you. We'll take the following note, reminders. So our first timers online can log into our Zoom chat room immediately after the service. So the Zoom chat room will be opened immediately after the service. So first timers who are online, please log in. You, you may log in, okay? Our reception team is on standby to interact with you on Zoom. So the details, to be on the screen. The details are on the screen. So please take notes. And Friday is our physical prayer meeting, night of encounter. It's such an exciting time, and we are all encouraged to attend. There will be no pre-registration as always, but COVID protocols will always, always be observed. There will be baby dedication, and this is scheduled for Sunday, 14th of November, 2021 as part of the main service. And it's going to start at 9.30 a.m. All who wish to have their babies dedicated should register at the church office latest tomorrow, Monday, 8 November. It will be for both physical and virtual participants. In preparation towards the interactive service on Sunday, 28th November, please remember to submit to the church office questions you may have on our current Bible study, uh, discipleship, any sermons preached, or any other issues in the Bible. Send questions to the email, I believe the email, um, that is licadmin at licfamily.org.gh. And for WhatsApp, the number, as always, is 54 I'll take the number again, 054-2000-687. And please note that the deadline is 10th of November. Registration for physical service is mandatory. And uh, you can call or send a WhatsApp message to the church office for a registration link. Um, the number is the same as I called out, 0542 Zero 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 six eight seven. You can ask for assistance. You can ask to be registered. You can ask for registration for somebody, another person, you, a visitor you're bringing, and so on. So you can contact the church office for help. Online notices will roll before and after the service. So it rolls before. It will always roll after the before and after. So please take notes. Bands of marriage. We publish the bands of marriage for the first time between Mr. Seth Frimpong of LIC and Ms. Ms. Gifty Amankwa of Empowerment Worship Center, Joulu. Please, are they here today? Can you come forward, please? Thank you. So please inform the pastors or presiding elder if you know of any just and valid reason why these persons may not be lawfully joined together in marriage. But let's keep them in prayer. Thank you. You may take your seats, please. Okay. So there is, a, we have a letter from the Ministry of Health. So there's a team, a team from the Ghana Health Service will be available 
uh, on the LIC lawn next Sunday, 14th of November, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. with a Moderna vaccine for interested church members who have not yet taken the first shot, as well as those who have taken the AstraZeneca, that's the first shot, and require the second. And please come along with your, your card, if you have taken the first, your card, and uh, for the AstraZeneca. And this will be on a first come, first service, first come, first serve basis. So please take note of that. And please note the following if you're coming. The vaccine will be given to individuals above age of 18. So you should be above 18 years and come with a valid national ID. <clears throat> Remember to bring your, your COVID-19 vaccine card if you have already been vaccinated. And um, you are expected to wait at the vaccination center 15 minutes after vaccination, and it's, it's for your own good. And then if you have um, the dates for the next Moderna vaccine will be communicated to those who, who go and, and get vaccinated. There are common side effects such as headaches, chills, body pains, pain on the side of inoculation, dryness in the mouth, um, profuse bleed, uh, sorry, sweating, general malaise. And if you have any of these after you have taken it, you can report to the, the vaccine, vaccination team as well. And um, the, the month of November, um, the Ghana Health Service will continue with the vaccination the month of November. We are having an opportunity here, so I think we, we might as well grab it if you haven't done that. God bless you. And so we will pray with the Sunday school children as they go to Sunday school. Um, the preschoolers will stay with us, stay with our parents, and then um, class one and above will go um, to the new building. Sunday school, can you please rise and let's pray together as you go to Sunday school? Can I see you standing? And then you close your eyes and let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, O oh God, for your love for us. We thank you that you love children. And so when they brought children to you, that you lay your hands on them and you bless them. You did not allow anybody to drive them away. And so today they are here to be blessed by you again. We pray that you will bless them as they go to Sunday school, that you open their hearts and you speak to them. Father, impact these ones, O oh God, for eternity. Let them continue to live for you all the days of their lives. Protect them as they go and bless them. And bless their teachers as well as they share with them. Help them to be able to share with them in a way that the children will understand. Thank you that you do more than we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. God bless you. Enjoy your service. So we'll take the scripture readings now, please. Our first Bible reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 1 to 6. Exodus chapter 31, verse 1 to 6. I'm reading from the New International Version. Let us hear the word of God. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, and to cut and set stones to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. Moreover, I have appointed Oholiab, son of Ahismek, of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given skill to all the craftsmen to make everything I have commanded you. Here in the, ends the word of God. Our second reading will be taken from John 15, 26 and John 16, 7. John 15, 26 and John 16, 7. 
John 15, 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Here ends the reading. LIC, LIC, shall we pray? Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you so much for the privilege we have this morning to come to your word. We ask that the Holy Spirit will help us to discover your mind and give us the ability to apply them. We plead the blood of Jesus as a covering over this atmosphere and we pray that the evil one will have no place in our midst. Thank you that Lord, your word will not return to you void. It will accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, I want to give thanks to God for the opportunity to share the word of God with us. Shortly after I became, I, I learned to drive. I was on my way somewhere when I discovered that I had developed a flat tie. And at that stage, I really didn't know how to change the tie, like many of us here. And as I was wondering what to do, a young man just walked over and asked if I wanted help. And I said, of course, I need help. And within a matter of 15 minutes, I was back on the road. And as I was going, I, I started wondering what, how many hours more I would have spent there if I tried myself to fix that tire. I could have gone on YouTube, look at how they do it, but definitely that was going to take a longer time. And I'm very sure that all of us sitting here at one point or the other in our lives have come to a place in our lives where we needed help. And then somebody came through for us. You see, there is nothing as calming as being at your wit's end and hearing the sound of help. Hearing someone saying, I will help you. Maybe when you are financially down and someone comes and says, don't worry. I'll take care of that need. Or maybe you are, you are driving somewhere and you are lost and someone comes along and provides guidance. Or maybe you are stuck somewhere and somebody helps to push you through. Help, see, for someone in need, even a little help can make a world of a difference for that person. So physically we need help. And it is true that spiritually, you and I need help. You see, whereas physically, you may decline the help, and you can still manage, we need to understand that spiritual help, needing help spiritually is not an option. We won't make it without the help of God. But the good news this morning is that 
every help we will ever need in our Christian life has been provided. We have help. We have heavenly help for our earthly pilgrimage as we journey towards heaven. And this morning, we want to learn about our helper. Our helper. For six months now, we've been looking at the theme, the incomparable Jesus, his mission. And this morning, we continue in that same theme by looking at the topic, Jesus sends the helper from the Father. Jesus sends the helper from the Father. And what, to help us look through this particular topic, I want us to look at it under three main points. Number one, we want to look at this helper in terms of the reason why we have him. The helper. We want to look at the person of the helper. Who is he? Who is this helper we have been given? We want to also look at the promise of this helper. In what context Jesus gave this promise? The promise of the helper. And finally, we shall spend more time looking at the purpose of the helper. So the promise, the personality, and then finally, the purpose for which God gave us the helper. Please turn with me to John chapter 14 and please look at verse 16. John 14 verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to help you and be with you forever. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper who will be with you forever. First, I want us to look at the promise of the helper. You see, when you read John, Chapter 13 up to chapter 17 all occurred on one night. You know, sometimes we are tempted to think that because Jesus' ministry took about three years, that the things that were narrated in the Gospels took place, you know, along. But John 13 up to John 17 were events that took place on the same night. The night before Jesus went to the cross. And in this particular context, at the Passover meal, the Bible tells us that Jesus started to announce to his servants, his disciples, that he was going to leave them. And that was very challenging because for three years now, these disciples or apostles had become very close to the Lord Jesus. They had become very close and dear to him. He was very dear to them. Jesus was everything to them. They had left their families and they were living with Jesus, moving about, ministering together, only for Jesus to announce that in a few hours, in about 12 hours time, I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to leave you. That was very challenging for the disciples. Their helper, their teacher, their savior. When they were in a storm, Jesus saved them. Now he's leaving them. Who is going to save them? When the Pharisees tried to get at them for plucking the head of corn on the Sabbath, Jesus defended them. He was their advocate. And in a few hours' time, Jesus is going to leave them. That's very challenging. But not only that, Jesus had taught them that when he leaves, they were responsible for carrying out his mission. The disciples were to carry out the mission of Jesus. Jesus came on a mission, and for that mission, they killed him. And you are asking us to carry on this mission when you are not going to be with us. How are we going to survive? But not only that, Jesus added that one of them, the 12, 
was going to betray him. And one of them was going to deny him three times. The chief of the apostles, Peter, was going to deny Jesus three times that night. And then Jesus asked that every one of those disciples were going to abandon him. So here is the Lord living, commissioning us to carry out his mission. And one of us is going to betray him. Another is going to deny him three times. And all of us are going to abandon him. And yet we are to carry out this mission. It is in this context of Jesus' departure and then the disciples' failure as they pondered the mission which they were to carry when Jesus departs. It is in that context that Jesus spoke John chapter 14 verse 16. And he tells them that it is going to be possible because I am going to send you the helper. I am going to send you the helper. And friends, by the time Jesus was speaking, the helper was a promise. But now as we speak, the, pro the promise has been realized. It is no longer the helper is coming. We live in the reality that the helper has come. The Holy Spirit is here with us now. The helper has come. And this promise is very, very important because just like the disciples, Jesus is not with us physically. And it is this helper who would help us to experience the reality of the presence of Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, Jesus is a theory. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, Jesus becomes abstract. It is this helper who makes Jesus real to us in our Christian life. And not only that, just like the disciples, we are bound to fail without the help of the helper. How many times haven't we come to New Year? You know, 31st night, and make a lot of resolutions for our spiritual lives. Let me ask you, how often or how long does those resolutions keep? This year, I am going to pray for one hour every day. How many of us are still doing that? I'll read through the Bible in a year. And many of us, after three months, we fail. How many times don't we go to God and say, God, forgive me for this particular sin. And Lord, I promise that it will not happen again. And again and again we fail. And so just as the disciples needed the promise of the helper, we also need the help of the helper. Hallelujah. And thanks be to God that the helper is here with us. So that's the promise of the helper. But you see, when I'm, someone is drowning, and then somebody else shouts, don't worry, I will help you. I think that the person drowning will have one question. Does this person know how to swim? It is not just any kind of help we need. We need an able, competent helper. Some time ago, a story was reported of a grandmother who went with their grandson to a swimming pool. And they were just sitting there. And then this little boy was chasing his ball. And amidst protests from the grandmother, the ball fell into the water and the boy jumped into it. And the grandmother also jumped into the water. And after a few minutes, the lifeless bodies of both the grandmother and the grandson were recovered. It's not just any help we need. We need a helper who can be able to meet the need that we have. And so the question is, does this helper Jesus is promising? That's in the minds of the disciples. Jesus, they can never think there will be anybody who will be able to take the place of Jesus in their lives. And so to say that I will send you a helper 
will this helper be able to meet and live with us the way you did? And the question that the, the answer is yes, and even more. And so we want to also look at the personality, the profile of this helper we are speaking about. The Holy Spirit. What kind of helper is he? What kind of helper is this Holy Spirit we are talking about? And the first thing we note is that the Holy Spirit is a helper like Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a helper like Jesus. Please again look at John 14, 16. It says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Now the word another implies that the disciples have already had a helper. You can't use the word another unless it is an addition or a replacement. If your child destroys their toy and you say, I'll buy you another toy. It means that they have had a toy already. And so when Jesus said, I will give you another helper, he was saying that this helper is not the first helper you are going to have. You've already had a helper. And this is where a little knowledge in the original language helps us. In the Greek, there are two words that can be translated another. Heteros and alos. And let me just illustrate this. Let's assume you visit me and I tell you, I give you a bowl of fruit, pineapples. And you finish it and I said, should I give you another bowl of fruits? And you said, yes. If I give you another bowl of pineapples, I have given you another bowl of fruit of the same kind. But if in my second offer, I give you a bowl full of purple, it is still fruit, but it is fruit of a different kind. The first one, alos, means another of the same kind the second heteros is another of a different kind and when jesus said i will send you another helper he said i will send you another helper like myself another helper just like myself and what this means is that what jesus was and did for the original apostles, the Holy Spirit is and does for us living now. You see, there are times that people say that they wish they had seen Jesus physically and they had met Jesus physically. But I want you to understand that we are never at a disadvantage because we have another helper of the same kind. Jesus taught them and this helper teaches. Jesus saved them deliver them and this helper delivers he is another helper like jesus that's the first thing we note but in fact in john 16 7 jesus says he is a helper who is even better you see if jesus were on earth i believe that one of the busiest airports would be the airport in israel Everybody will be trying to see Jesus. And when you manage and get into Jerusalem and you try to get to where Jesus is, I'm sure there will be a very long queue. And maybe a committee will meet and say that because of the number of people, let's make sure that everybody can see Jesus for just one minute. But thanks be to God that today, wherever you are, irrespective of your distance, Jesus can become real because the helper is in every child of God. And that is why Jesus says, it is better for me to go so that the helper will come. He is a helper like Jesus. But number two, he is a personal helper. He is a personal helper helper. Again, if you look into your Bibles, you will note that 
The word I'm using, helper, helper, helper. John 14, 16, you don't find that word in your, in your translation. Some of your translations say comforter. I will send you the comforter. Other translations say, I will send you the advocate. Other translations says, I will send you the paraclete. That is what you find in your translations. And the reason is because the Greek word translated helper in my version and comforter in your version, advocate in another version, is such rich that no one word can actually give us the full meaning. It is the word paraclete. Paraclete. And a paraclete is someone who has been sent to come alongside you to provide help along your way. That's a paraclete. A paraclete is someone who has been sent to come alongside you and provide help. When you are down, he provides comfort. When you are discouraged, he provides encouragement. When you are weak, he provides strength. And so the Holy Spirit is a personal helper. And I call him a personal helper because he is not a helper who is living somewhere and communicating with you on phone. He is a helper Jesus sent to come alongside you as you take the steps in the Christian life to help you on your way. That is the kind of helper we have. That is the kind of helper we have. Amazing helper, personally, along our, our, our life's journey to help us as we journey along. He is a personal helper. But thirdly, the Holy Spirit is an everlasting helper. He is an everlasting helper. Please look again at that verse. Verse 16, John 14, 16. And I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you, not for some time, to be with you, not for some days, to be with you forever. Forever. You see, there are people in our lives whose help are seasonal. We are seasonal helpers. Somebody who comes into your life and says, I will help you. I will stand with you. And then after a period of time, you realize that they are no longer available. They are helpers that you need to book appointment with. And sometimes they will refuse to help you because you didn't let them know you are coming for help. But not the Holy Spirit. He is a 24-7 helper in the life of the believer. It doesn't matter what time. It doesn't matter what need. It doesn't matter how long we have had challenges. Anytime we just call. Oh, I need help. He is an ever-present source of help in times of trouble. He is an everlasting helper. He was there when you started a Christian life. He will be there when you finish it. He is an everlasting helper. And that is the kind of helper we have. And lastly, he is an internal helper. He is an internal helper. If you kindly go to John chapter 15, the verse 26. When the helper comes, whom I will send from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you are, he has been with me from the beginning. John, again, 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sends in my name, he will teach you all things and will remain with you and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. And finally, please, John 16, we shall look at verse 7. But I tell you the truth, it is good, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regards to sin and righteousness and judgment. You see, 
This helper we are talking about, as we alluded earlier on, he is not an external helper. He is an internal helper. And sometimes we are tempted when we are praying, we are tempted when we have a need to think of God as so distant. Rather than a helper who is right inside me. When I became a believer, when you became a believer, God put his Holy Spirit inside us. The Holy Spirit is closer to you more than the dress you are wearing. In terms of proximity and distance. Because he lives inside you. He has filled you. He is not an external helper. And that is the kind of helper we have. But this morning, the question is this. If the Holy Spirit is to us, and is to do for us all that Jesus was and did for his disciples, I want to ask you, has the coming of the Holy Spirit into your life brought you the same advantage Jesus was to the disciples? What Jesus was to the disciples, are you experiencing it in reality? I'm not talking about, do you know that the Holy Spirit is to do these things for you? The question I'm asking is, are we experiencing it in our lives? Uh, do we know his help? Do you know in practice the helper who is personal, the helper who is like Jesus, the helper who is inside, the helper who is everlasting? Do we know him in practice? You see, I want to challenge us. It is not enough to know any truth in a Christian life. We must move beyond knowing truths to experiencing them. What use is it for someone to know Jesus is a savior if he doesn't experience him as a savior? He will still perish. What use is it to know God as, as, as helper and not experience his help. We must not be content to remain at the level of knowledge. Knowledge must become our very experience. And I want to say that anybody who desires to know the help of the Spirit will know it. See, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he doesn't force himself on anybody. You know, sometimes when you are driving through traffic and those guys, you know, the, the, the people who clean the wind, windscreen. You know, sometimes how aggressive they come in before you realize they are already, you know, working on your glass. Even when you are telling them to stop, they keep on. They go against your will. The Holy Spirit is not like that. The Holy Spirit is not like that. He doesn't force his way. In your life. And so when you write on, on, on the doors of your heart, strictly out of bounds, staff only, strictly out of bounds, the Holy Spirit will not force his way through. And that is why it is possible for a child of God to be in need and still not be experiencing practically the help of the Holy Spirit. And so let's look at his help. And how we can respond to his help. The third teaching point is the help, the, 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 the purpose of the helper. Why did God send the Holy Spirit into our lives? Why did he send him into our lives? And here I want you to look at John chapter, 13, chapter 14 verse 13. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that I will bring glory to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name in order to bring glory to my Father. You see, one of the key aims of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the believer is that 
the Holy Spirit exists in our lives to bring glory to God. Holy Spirit exists in our lives. You see, God has always been about his glory. He created us for his glory. He does the things he does for his glory. And when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, he comes to help us glorify Jesus. To bring glory to the Lord Jesus. And so we want to look at how he does that in our lives. And I want to say that he does that right from the beginning to the very end of our Christian lives. Number one, the Holy Spirit helps us to become children of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us, you and I, to become children of God. You see, when an altar call is made, for example, an invitation to believe in the gospel is made, and sometimes you stand up and you respond, you might be tempted to think that it was your own decision, your own choice. But that is only true in a secondary way. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, there is no way any of us can actually respond to the gospel. If you read John 14 and the verse 18, verse 17, the spirit of truth, the world cannot receive him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. You see, when you look at the Holy Spirit of God, Nobody who is outside Christ can by their own choice receive him. The world cannot receive him. But at the moment of salvation, it is the Holy Spirit of God who brings conviction. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. He convicts us of sin. You know, there are times when you are sitting there and you are preaching the message and you stand up. You may be in a group of about three or four. You all came together, but you respond. There is a conviction in your heart. You realize you are a sinner and you need a savior. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is why in John 3, 5, Jesus said, unless a person is born again by water and the spirit, they cannot see the kingdom of God. We are born again by the help of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be Christians. And that is why I, I believe that in praying for people who do not know the Lord, brothers, sisters, family members, who do not know the Lord, that work colleague, we should be praying that the Holy Spirit will produce his conviction in their hearts and help them to see their need for a savior. The Holy Spirit. But not only does the Holy Spirit help us to become God's children, he is the one who enables us to remain God's children. You see, but for the help of the Holy Spirit, none of us sitting here irrespective of our disciplines, we'll still be Christians. Because there are forces fighting against you remaining a Christian. But the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to remain Christians. And he does it in three ways. Please look at Coloss uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. The Bible says, and you. And you also were included in Christ. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed, you were marked with a seal in him. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, 
guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of God's possession to the place, to the praise of his glory. See, the Holy Spirit is the one who seals you when you become a believer. And what is the function of a seal? You see, when you buy serious drink or Don Simon, when you open it, you realize that there is a seal. I'm not sure that anybody will pay for it if we realize that the seal is broken. If the seal of that drink is broken, it means it's not authentic. It's not safe. If the seal is broken, it means it's not original. And so when we believed, the Holy Spirit is the one who seals us to prove that we are truly the children of God. Without the Holy Spirit, there will be contention about your spiritual paternity. But it is the Holy Spirit who seals you. And you see, the moment a drink is sealed, unless that seal is broken, no other content can be added to that seal. And so the Holy Spirit, by sealing us, also keeps us safe from any kind of contamination from the enemy. You know, the kind of things sometimes we read and we are following and the things people we are following, the preachers we are listening to, if not for the Holy Spirit, we will be deceived. He seals us. But not only that, also the Holy Spirit is the one who guarantees. He is the deposit guaranteeing that the salvation God has started in your life, he will carry it to an end. If you look at the verse 14, he is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. You see, sometimes when you are going to buy an item, you put a deposit. And the deposit is an indication that you will surely come back. Nobody leaves a deposit and doesn't go back for, for, the, for the item. And God will not give you his Holy Spirit if he does not intend to continue with you to the very end. And that's why Paul said, be confident of this, that he who has started the good things in you will bring it unto a completion in the day of Christ. He is a guarantee that God will complete his work. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit helps us to remain Christians by bearing witness that we are children of God. You see, maybe due to one failure or the other, the devil can accuse you. How many of us haven't heard sometimes a voice saying, so you call yourself a Christian? You are not worthy to go for that prayer meeting. Don't even go to the communion table. You are a sinner. You are not saved. You are an unbeliever. Romans 8, 16 says that in the context of all that, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And please note that Romans 8, 16 doesn't say the spirit bears witness to our spirit. He says the spirit bears witness with our spirit. And what that means is that while Satan is engaging you and in your mind you are saying, but I went for that altar call. But I know I am a child of God. But I know I believe. The Holy Spirit says, indeed, I am a witness. I was there. I sealed him. I sealed there. This is a true child of God. Hallelujah. The Spirit helps us to remain children of God. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to grow as children of God. To grow as children of God. Spiritual growth is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Number one, how does he do that? He helps us to understand the truth of God. You see, when we again go to John chapter 14, consistently Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. And he tells us in John 14, John 16, 13, that he will guide us into all truths. He also says that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things and remind us of all things. 
You see, when you find yourself in temptation, scarcely will you go and pick a Bible. You know, when temptation, you know, you are, you are in front of the temptation and then you pick your Bible. We don't do that. But there are times you find yourself in a temptation and a scripture you memorized some time ago just comes to mind. And you remember God's position on that thing and you decide. You walk away from the temptation. What is happening? The spirit is reminding you of the truths you have known. Maybe you are with someone and the person speaks a harsh word. It may be your husband, your wife, and you are tempted to also speak back. And then suddenly, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6 comes out, you know, into your mind. Let nothing profane come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building others up. And then immediately you realize that your bubble of, you know, punch is diffused. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings to mind the truth. But not only that, he is the one who enables us to understand the word of God. He is called the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He brings illumination to the word of God. Your ability to understand the word of God in his truth is not a function of your grammatical ability. It's a function of your illumination from the Holy Spirit. Friends, but how often we go to the word of God and because you know inductive Bible study, you know how to do topical Bible study, many of us carry the Bible and we just open it and start reading without asking for his help. When was the last time you asked for the Spirit's help in trying to understand the word? Friends, without the Holy Spirit, the Bible is a closed book. But how exciting it is when you have the altar of a book sitting by you as you are reading the book and he gives you light, he throws insight and shows you the intent and the purposes. As we come to the Bible with the Holy Spirit, light comes. Light comes. Light comes. He teaches us. Many of us just read a text and we run to the commentary without finding out. Oh, Spirit of God, what is your intent? The Holy Spirit helps us. But not only that, he also helps us to have effective prayer lives. He helps us. Prayer is one of the things you need to grow as a child of God. And it is the Holy Spirit who makes prayer something that is effective. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In that we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit helps us in our weakness by making intercession for us. So what the Bible is saying is that you and I, there are times in prayer we do not even know what to pray for. But in those moments, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with wordless groans. I remember when I was doing my internship with Kolebu Community Chapel, one day I was just coming after work around 5 p.m. And then suddenly a picture of one of us, a church member, just strongly came to mind as he was on my heart. I didn't know what it was. I felt like praying. And I started praying. I prayed from circle right to Lokonglo. And then I felt the, the burden lift. And then I called her. And then she picked and then she said, my child nearly died. We were on admission at the Legon Hospital. And in a moment, I just felt I should look at my son. And when I saw him, I realized that his color was changing. And the doctors came around. And this child was between life and death. And then it made sense to me. When God brought that picture into my mind and gave me a burden, when the Holy Spirit was impressing upon me, I didn't even know. But I just kept praying for her. 
And there are times you are there and the Holy Spirit lays a burden on your heart. Please don't ignore it. He is the spirit of prayer and supplication. When you find out your prayer life is down, ask him to help you to be effective in prayer. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit helps us to grow because he is also the spirit by which we offer acceptable worship to God. He helps us in studying the word. He helps us in effective prayer. And he helps us in meaningful and effective worship. John 4, 24. Behold, the days are coming and they are now when the true worshipers will worship God in the spirit and in truth. Without the Holy Spirit, worship is meaningless. But number four, so number one, he helps us to become God's children. Number two, he helps us to remain God's children. Number three, the Holy Spirit helps us to grow as God's children. Number four, the Holy Spirit helps us to become like Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to become like Jesus. He has come alongside you to ensure that you will become like the Lord Jesus Christ. Which is the goal of the Christian life. You see, when you read Galatians 5 verse 22, we sometimes read that passage as if the fruit we see there is that the verse says, now these are the fruits of the human striving. The pastor said, now these are the fruits. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it is the fruit the Spirit produces which you display. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you are sitting here this morning, you need love. You need love in your marriage. You need patience at work. You need kindness, goodness, gentleness. And of course, you must take steps. But I want to say that it is the Holy Spirit who enables us to bear all this. And without him, it is impossible. And friends, it is impossible to become like Jesus without the help of the Spirit of Jesus. You can't become like Jesus without the help of the Spirit of Jesus. So maybe I have need for self-control and I say, Holy Spirit, please help me. And he guides me to a book. He guides me to a friend. He arranges the circumstances so that I can grow in the area of self-control. The Spirit helps us. And not only that, number five, the Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us, who helps us to serve Jesus effectively. To serve Jesus effectively. LIC save to serve. And we wonder why are people not serving? Sometimes it is because we do not have the help of the Holy Spirit. How does he do that? He gives us gifts. Gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone for the common good. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us what it takes to serve Jesus effectively. And we read of it in the second passage, the Exodus passage, the first reading. God says, I'll put my spirit in Bezalel. I'll put my spirit in Oholiab and all the craftsmen so that by my spirit they would serve in the project you have been called for. Maybe you realize that you are a Sunday school teacher, you realize that you are a Bible study leader, you realize that maybe you are a ministry leader and you want to say, Holy Spirit, activate and sharpen my gate so that I can serve you effectively. I'm a church member, but I want to serve you effectively. Help me. Finally, the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to witness about Jesus with our lives and with our words. The Holy Spirit. You know, one of the reasons why many of us are unable to speak to others about Christ is because of fear. You look at it, it's fear. What they will say, what they will do, I don't know. But in Acts chapter 4, the verse 29 and 30, the Bible said the apostles were also afraid 
And what did they do? They prayed that God would give them boldness to declare and pray and, and, and testify about Jesus. And when God answers, what he did was to fill them with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said they went about and spoke boldly for the Lord. The antidote to fear is the Holy Spirit. You see, when we are going for evangelism and we are two, we may not be afraid as if we are alone. And I think that sometimes it is because we are not conscious that we are actually not alone. The Holy Spirit is inside us. And you are talking to somebody and they are asking some questions and then a verse, you memorize some time ago, just comes. You open and there it is so that you can effectively witness for Jesus. The Holy Spirit does all these things in our lives so that we can give glory to the Lord Jesus. And this morning, that helper is available for us. Please bow down your heads with me. Do you see your need for the helper who has been sent to come alongside you? Do you see your need for the Holy Spirit? The choir is going to lead us in a song and while we do that, if you are here and you sense your need for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, just rise on your feet and we'll pray that the Holy Spirit's help will be activated in our lives. The first song we sang uh, during worship. of the Holy Spirit and you want to say I need this helper in my life if that is you please rise up on your feet
quickly how to raise this child. Oh yeah. Holy Spirit help me. 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 Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord for Himself. Begin to appeal to the Lord for Himself. Maybe you feel oppressed, but the Bible says, "Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty." And this morning, you want to say, "I want that liberty. Liberty from the power of sin. Liberty from the power of addiction." Holy Spirit, give me liberty. Begin to talk to the Lord. Cry unto God. Let Him hear your voice. Let Him hear your voice this morning. That is our helper. That is our helper. He was meant to carry us along. Jesus. Maybe you need direction. He was given to lead us. Pray and ask the Lord for help. In the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Thank you that we are not spiritual orphans. Because you said you will not leave us as orphans. But you will come to us. Lord Jesus, you have sent your spirit. The one who makes the Christian life a thing that carries us rather than we carrying it. Forgive us for ignoring you, Holy Spirit. Forgive us for controlling our own lives. Instead of yielding to you and walking in step with you. This morning we acknowledge our need for you. The helper from above. And we ask in the name of Jesus. Lord renew your help in our lives. We pray that the Holy Spirit will renew his help. In our lives at this time in the name of Jesus. We need help Lord. We need help, Lord. We need help, Lord. Thank you that the Holy Spirit has been sent as our helper. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us help in every area of our lives. Because we know that it is only in your help that we will find rest. Thank you. Thank you that, Lord, you do much more than we have asked or even imagined. That as we live here, we would experience and testify of the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you do much more than we can ask or even imagine for your glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. Reverend, God richly bless you. I was blessed. I hope that you were blessed too. Shall we go out there and shine forth and impact the world with the treasure that is in us? Thank you. Treasure in earthen vessels. Um, please let's take this reminder again. The first time as um, kindly wait behind us, I said, please in front here after the service. And those online, the chat room will be opened right after the service. Please um, join in, okay? You can just connect and then join in. You will have um, the reception team waiting there for you. Don't be in a hurry to go. Thank you very much. We'll sing together the closing hymn, Thou Who Came As From Above.
we receive the benediction. Now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The Lord be with you. Have a blessed Sunday and God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.